Thank you, Georgia. Hello, my name is Melissa Petorka. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a health promotion and evaluation specialist at the University of Waterloo and a member of the International Health Promoting Universities and Colleges Steering Group. I live, learn, work, and play on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. The University of Waterloo was built on the Haldeman Tract, the land granted to the Six Nations. In this session, we will hear from five networks from around the world. We won't have time for a Q&A. However, if you have questions for our presenters, the final slide will have their contact details, which we'll also share on our website. Please follow up with your regional lead if you want to learn more about getting involved. You can also find, um, yes, and please remember to visit our conference website. So now I'm going to pass it over to our first uh, speaker who represents the Indian Network, Dr. Rajiv, over to you. Hello, everyone. I hope I'm audible. Good morning, Matt, Jen, Julia, Georgia, Gabriel, Melissa. Thank you for coordinating all this. A guten Tag to Christine, a Wong Chang Hao to Johnston, a Swazdi Duan Yen to Pudit, and from India, a traditional Namaskar, the way of greeting all our guests with folded hands. I am Dr. Rajiv Yerevdekar, the Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences at Symbiosis International University, Pune, in the state of Maharashtra, in the western part of India. I am a gynecologist by training, but currently my interests go on to the larger domain of public health. I'm involved in various national policy formulations, and I have done my PhD in the field of health promoting universities in India. The diversity of higher educational systems in India is something to take note of with 1,043 universities. Categories include private universities, government universities, deemed universities, and other universities. 420 universities are in the rural area, 17 universities are universities dedicated only for women. The student progression characteristics, typically the students in higher education system are in the age group of 18 to 23. The gross enrollment ratio calculated in this age group is 38.5 million with an equitable distribution across the genders. The total enrollment is 38.5, but the GER is 27.1. And we have a total of about 50,000 international students from 168 countries. And the expenditure on social services, by which I include health, education, and others, is 8.6% of the GDP. Coming to the health issues of the educational ecosystem in India, which includes the staff, students, and faculty, and the community at large, one is the concerns of physical health, typically physical in, uh, illiteracy and sedentary lifestyle. So metaphorically speaking, we want to convert every one of our couch potatoes into field carrots. The second one is of mental health, ubiquitously, the problem of unawareness and the stigma attached to mental health problems. And the approach is therefore to build a resilient and a compassionate health system through the approach of demedicinalizing it, destigmatizing it, and educating to raise awareness. Nutritional concerns stem from food fads, the inability to make healthy food choices, and the tendency to ape Western fast food. And therefore, the objective is to foster nutritional literacy. The, di the tripod of nutritional illiteracy, physical illiteracy, and mental health uh, problems lead to a host of disorders called as lifestyle-related disorders or disorders related to their faulty lifestyle, leading to uh, diet-related disorders, sleep disorders, weight problems, so on and so forth. But the main problems are that of a strong peer influence and a peer pressure the tendency of policymakers to erroneously expect students to be healthy on campus and problems of accessibility and affordability. We have undertaken a slew of activities at the Symbiosis International University to promote health promoting initiatives from the health center to the university to the, out, um, the hospital, the community outreach, the tendency to build up a social uh, ecosystem, healthy policies, 2000 watt label earned from the government of Switzerland, and ultimately encouraging wider academic interests and research, resulting in a mental health policy for higher educational institutes. And the networking initiatives, we have tried to network with stakeholders to raise awareness 
and try to build up a momentum for promoting the awareness regarding health promoting universities in India with national international agencies and our bid to host the first international conference on health promoting universities in India and therefore to propagate this momentum of health promoting universities. I'm delighted to share with you that I will be presenting a research paper on the initiatives undertaken by the Symbiosis International University as a health promoting university in a week's time from now. And we would be showcasing our results which show encouraging results in the five years which we have propagated these initiatives in the period from 29 to 009 to 2014. And we look forward to networking with international organizations to understand their best practices and to host the first conference to get all like-minded people to interact with the governmental, non-governmental organizations to promote the concept of health promoting higher educational institutions in the country. Thank you for a patient hearing and I look forward to learning from my esteemed colleagues. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv. I'm now going to turn it over to Professor Johnston of the Chinese Network. Hello. Hello, everybody. I think uh, you can hear me, I hope. Well, uh, I must first uh, uh, express my gratitude to the Canadian organizers. I already mentioned to them that uh, they have done uh, wonderful work. And uh, I, of course, I also think it's very important uh, that we owe this to uh, the indigenous people and the land of Canada. I also want to share that I actually graduated from Brock University. So uh, Canada is uh, uh, also a hometown for me. Yeah, and and uh, it witnessed my the, uh, early growth. Okay, uh, now I am uh, teaching uh, at uh, the university called uh, United International College. So uh, you can see in this uh, picture that uh, actually uh, the, on the side of the UBC, we put a campus there, this is our, our library. Actually, we call this Learning Resource Center of the United International College. It is uh, com uh, actually a joint venture uh, between the BNU, Beijing Normal University and the Hong Kong Baptist University. It is uh, relatively new. It was established in 2005, and now uh, we have around 8,000 students. Okay, so uh, we are actually a newcomer uh, to this uh, international network. Uh, uh, after uh, we established uh, the, uh, uh, the university in the few years, and then we build a campus, then we uh, understand that uh, the health of our students is very important. And at that time, I am also responsible for the student affairs of uh, the university. So uh, we have invited, uh, uh, invited uh, uh, Mark Duris uh, to come to uh, give us an introductory seminar in the 2020, in 2020. So uh, at that time, we did not know very uh, much about uh, the Okanagan Charter. And then, the, but we have joined the international network, fortunately, through uh, an introduction of a WHO uh, experts. Okay, so uh, in this several years, we have tried to, um, first of all, uh, strengthen ourselves. We hope that uh, we can uh, build uh, an internal consensus. So uh, we started in uh, 2020 uh, to uh, organize internal and internal healthy. Uh, UIC seminar, and then we open, all launched the first UIC Student Health Ambassador Scheme, and then we continue to this year. And then the, in the uh, 2021, uh, a uh, very important step uh, within our organization is that uh, we, uh, 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 in, we persuaded the senior management to form a healthy uh, university and uh, subcommittee. UIC Health Promoting University Subcommittee. And uh, it means that we now have a formal structure within the system, and then uh, it will become a uh, long-term uh, efforts. It's not just one by one uh, activities. So uh, our plan is that uh, in the coming, in the coming uh, June, so we will also organize a healthy university and active health conference, but this time is for the Greater Bay Area in Guangdong and Hong Kong, including Hong Kong and Macau. So we are trying to expand our influence. 
step by step. So you can see that the strategy, our strategy is actually bottom up. So uh, at first we start with UIC uh, within ourselves, and then uh, we uh, have uh, some joint venture universities, and then we expand it to uh, Guangdong and Macau, uh, Hong Kong Macau Greater Bay Universities. So it is uh, a gradual process, and uh, we hope uh, that we can uh, eventually uh, expand it to the, uh, uh, all China universities and see whether we can organize a national conference kind of in 2023. Uh, so at the, at the moment, uh, we are just uh, developing or uh, preparing for our China network. So far, it is quite, uh, uh, it's still a long process. Uh, and then to, to let you know the size of the university in China, there are altogether 2,068 and 688 colleges and universities. And the number of students are 40 million. So they are, it is a big population. So it's very, very challenging. Uh, but also one to, the advantage of our university in promoting health is that all undergraduates uh, in China are required to live on campus. So we have uh, the time for each student to, uh, uh, to work on them for four years, day and night, uh, supposedly, and unless uh, they, get, they went home during summer. So we have a long uh, period of time that we can try to help them build up their uh, proper behaviors. So the challenges in China, I think, uh, first of all, is the big population size and then the student population as well. And then another thing uh, is, of course, uh, it, it is, uh, there is a difference or there is a gap between the knowledge and behavior. A lot of students understand uh, health knowledge and then they are basically uh, health literate, literate, but uh, they may not adopt proper uh, health behaviors. For example, they all understand the ACE, uh, the effects of ACE, but they may not have safe sex. So there is uh, a cultural problems there. And, but at the same time, uh, China has this strength. Uh, Johnson, I, I'm just gonna yeah, give uh, you a 30 second warning that you'll need to wrap up in the next 30 seconds for okay, the Okay, I will just round up with one uh, last word, last sentence. Yes, please. Uh, I think uh, I appreciate uh, Dr. Walter in saying uh, the connection between the land and health and the people. And actually uh, Chinese share similar beliefs, the Taoism. The, in Taoism, we share similar beliefs. So in China, we also have traditional Chinese medicine. <coughs> and that is uh, one string that we can uh, employ and then uh, and build in, into our health education programs. Thank you very much. And, uh, and also we have a uh, sharing uh, in 1225, uh, that is a review of what the uh, university has done uh, in the recent years, the Chinese university. And uh, you're welcome to join us in the room 10 of, the, of our presentations. Sorry for that, for the delay. Thank you, I will end here. Thank you, Professor Johnston. Um, again, my name is Melissa and I am one of the co-chairs of the Canadian Health Promoting Campuses Network Committee, along with my colleague, Matt Dolph from the University of British Columbia. It is my honor to speak about this network today on behalf of my fellow committee members who co-created the information I'll be sharing with you today. Our network was initiated in 2016 with support from the Pan America Health Organization and leadership from various Canadian campuses. The network was created within the year following the development of the Okanagan Charter as a way of carrying on conversation, collaboration, and support across campuses following this event. <clears throat> we have three primary roles and responsibilities as a network committee. The first is to facilitate and advance Okanagan Charter activation and adoption within Canada. While our network facilitates the adoption process, each institution is responsible for their unique local commitments to the charter through a statement of adoption. A senior level leader, such as an executive, chancellor, university president, or provost, is required to sign the statement of adoption, which is submitted to us as the co-chairs of the committee, at which point we review and confirm their adoption, include their institution and their commitments on our network website, and share the announcement with our network community. The second is to build and maintain a Canadian network. 
Our network committee is comprised of representatives from post-secondary institutions and supporting organizations who provide the strategic direction and oversight to this work. In addition to the committee, we have a much broader network that we engage through a listserv that is open to anyone, no matter where you are at in your Okanagan Charter journey. The third is to collaborate with international networks. We are able to do this through our participation on the International Health Promoting Universities and Colleges Steering Group. And for the past few months, our focus has been on supporting the planning of this symposium. Some recent activities of the Canadian network have been to collaboratively host virtual events, including leveraging the Okanagan Charter to bounce forward from the crises of our time, including COVID-19 pandemic, systemic racism, colonialism, and climate emergency, and centering Indigenous engagement in the work of well-being and health promotion. Our network committee is currently undergoing a process for considering how we may want to structure and engage with each other that's mindful of the current landscape presented by the pandemic. We are keen for a renewal of the committee as well as consideration of opportunities to formally and intentionally engage our broader membership. Uh, through this process, our network committee was able to reflect collectively on what's been effective and where we face challenges. In terms of some of the strengths or what's worked well, we have diverse representation of various roles, including faculty, staff, students, and leaders who represent various campus sizes. Creating increased opportunities for funded students' positions is a future priority for us. Another strength is having engagement from endorsing organizations, such as the Canadian Mental Health Association and provincial branches, including Healthy Minds, Healthy Campuses, and the Center for Innovation in Campus Mental Health. Their capacity, expertise, and leveraging power has been a great asset to our efforts, and it also presents an area for future growth for our network. And lastly, in terms of challenges, um, it won't be surprising as it's a reality that we all face, um, and that is the sustainability of this network. Um, having co-chairs that are able to dedicate time to this network is nece necessary. Um, as well as all participating committee members. We currently don't have any source of funding or staffing capacity. Um, so Matt and myself and our committee members are all fortunate to have the support of our leaders to dedicate some time to this work. Speaking on behalf of myself, when I first started working in higher education and health promotion in 2019, having the support and knowledge of this network was invaluable. And that's what ultimately motivated me to serve as co-chair. Thank you for this opportunity, and I will now pass it off to my colleague, Sudit, representing the ASEAN Network. Thank you, Marisa. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Sudit. I'm an Associate Professor and Director of ASEAN Institute for Health Development at Mahidol University, Thailand. And I'm also the executive director of the ASEAN University Network for Health Promotion Network, which is called AUNHPN. Thank you very much for the opportunity uh, for having me to join you in this panel in order to share with you all about the development and progress of AUNHPN. Our network has been established under the charter of the ASEAN University Network or AUN as a thematic network since 2014, which is dedicated to health promotion in the ASEAN region. We have the mission to serve as a platform for ASEAN higher education institutions for collaboration among themselves and with other key stakeholders for the purpose of health promotion in ASEAN and also to share knowledge, skills and resources among the network members. As of May 2022, there are 30 core members from all 10 countries in ASEAN region and eight associate members taking part in our network. Uh, as for associate members, we're very really proud to have Osaka University from Japan, which is outside ASEAN region to join us. Now, let me talk about our network's first innovation. In 2017, we published the Healthy University, Net sorry, the Healthy University Framework or HUF as the foundation to AUNHPN's work, which plays the role of a reference guide for universities in terms of their roles and policies in health promotion at university level. Later on, just last year in July 2021, 
in order to assess the progress of healthy university policy and practice, our network has developed a tool aiming to monitor the implementation of universities process called the Healthy University Rating Scale or HURS, which contains assessment items based on 22 areas of the Healthy University Framework and to monitor the implementation of university in three main areas, which you can see at the middle of my slide, which are systems and infrastructure, secondly, zero tolerance, and the last one is health promotion. And every year we also have annual AUNHPN International Advisory Committee and International Conference on Healthy Universities, at which all you here are really welcomed. The IAC and International Conference will be held later this year during 7 to 8 November. And we will be very pleased and happy to have you all join us. As we are a newly established network just for eight years, we have faced some challenges in operating, especially in the time of COVID-19 pandemic that have delayed many of our planned activities. However, with the support from virtual meeting tools and regular steering committee meeting, we have somehow overcome this. As well, we have been sending the e-newsletter to all network members once a month to keep everyone posted and caught up with our activities. Our facilitators in running the network, mostly due to the high commitment and interest from regional and national universities and support from our national and government agency like Thai Health Promotion Foundation and Mahidon University Thailand, which makes our activities possible and achievable. You can find more details of our network from our website, which is provided on my slide. We also want to learn from you and other networks in order to improve ourselves. And we are open to any possible collaborative opportunity with you. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Marisa. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Pradeet. Uh, thank you, Pradeet. I'm now going to pass it on to Christian representing the German network. Yes, hello. My name is uh, Christian Stock, uh, and I'm a professor in public health and health education at the Charité Universitätsmedizin Berlin. I'm really happy to be here and speak to you about the German network of health promoting universities. Um, so thank you to the organizers. Um, and uh, the German uh, HPU network was founded in 1995, uh, meaning it's a relatively old network compared to the others we have uh, just heard of. Um, I was an early researcher at the University of Bielefeld at that time, and I was also a member of the University Steering Group for Health. So I was delegated to this new to join this newly founded network with five universities on board, and so I can call myself actually a founding uh, member. The initiative came from the Lower Saxony um, Association for Health, which is an NGO in the field of prevention and health promotion, and the this NGO is still the coordinating center. Um, in the 90s, the WHO book release on health promoting universities actually supported us and also uh, that the settings approach to health promotion was very prominent in Germany. So the network grew relatively fast and today we have 151 institutions and more than 400 individual members and we have already created seven regional networks. So in 2020, we celebrated the 25th anniversary, unfortunately, during the pandemic, but in a series of online events. Um, I conducted together with colleagues a network analysis, and that showed that the network started initially as an exchange network characterized by an exchange of knowledge, skills, and ideas. But then in the second phase, it was characterized by 
growth, but uh, but also the, uh, there was a development towards a promoting network. Different members were engaged in um, data collections and implementations of interventions at their universities, and the network served as a platform to discuss practices and approaches and also to share experiences and resources. Also key persons in the network are taking over special responsibilities and also the network started to engage in advocacy activities and in external networking. Uh, now the network is characterized by development of more regional subnetworks because it just grew very big. Um, so what are the current topics in our network? Um, student health management is a very important topic at the moment. Most universities in Germany have started with occupational health programs first. Uh, they have established occupational health management while they somewhat neglected students' health. So since a few years, universities have an obligation to conduct a mental health risk appraisal for students. And in addition, the pandemic also increased the awareness for students' mental and physical health. Many universities have established now student health management and the network supports them by providing expertise and knowledge exchange. Another important topic is to work towards creating more synergies between sustainability and climate awareness activities and health promoting promotion at uh, universities. Um, being asked what worked well in Germany and what has been effective in our network, um, I would say the German Prevention Act enabled us to develop partnerships with health insurances who are the main sponsor of HBU activities and programs in Germany. The Prevention Act supported also the financing of capacity building and competence development in the HBU field uh, through such uh, health insurance financing. Um, in in addition, many universities have a well-established occupational health management system in place, um, but that leads over also to one of the biggest challenges and uh, questions we are at the moment discussing, how to in integrate occupational health, health management and students' health management into a whole university approach, or should parallel governance structures exist? And in addition, we discussed how can the student health management be transferred from a more project-based funding into a sustainable structure. So this is another sustainability is another um, challenge with us. So thank you for your attention and I hand back to Melissa. Wonderful. Thank you, Christian. It has been so great to hear from each of you. We actually have a few extra moments that I can pose a question uh, and you will have about 30 seconds to a minute to respond. Um, so in two to three sentences, uh, I'd love to hear from you about how you plan to leverage what you've learn today um, and from each other within your own network. Um, and so we'll go in the same order. So I will start with Dr. Rajiv. Oh uh, yeah, that's a good, very relevant question, Melissa. And my first uh, priority is to establish a network. Unfortunately in India, the concept and awareness of a health promoting higher educational institute does not exist. So my first aim is to establish a network, get a stakeholder participation, have a combination of a top-down and a bottoms-up approach. As Mark Doris rightly says, it has to be a drip-drip approach. And then change the mindset, get it into the policies, structures, functions, and processes of higher educational systems, and get the support and garner the uh, understanding of all stakeholders. I need to also prioritize what are the areas specifically in the Health Promoting University project. And as I said, it has to be accessibility, affordability, and availability. But if I were to pick up one, it would be affordability, 
for a country which belongs to a category of a low and middle income country like india affordability of healthcare services is a major concern and as my colleague from germany said that it has to be a healthcare management and a managed healthcare system thank you thank you dr rajiv uh johnston are you able to share your thoughts on this please Yes, I uh, am particularly interested to learn from Christine the development of the German system or German network. Uh, I uh, I think her point of uh, establishing the network both with uh, university members and also indi individual members is very very important because at this stage I think uh, individual uh, health experts in the university will become the major uh, drive of uh, persuading the. Uh, university to become one of the members. I think this is a very good lesson that we can learn. And then uh, uh, another thing, I think uh, uh, the, our talk about COVID-19, COVID-19 is also an opportunity for us uh, to persuade the government uh, to uh, elect new laws. Uh, you know, in China, we have uh, such a large number of uh, universities and therefore the directives of the education, uh, Minister of Education is very important. If there is something like a policy or a, a law, then uh, I think a lot of universities will follow suit and then uh, you will uh, greatly enhance our development of network. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Lisa, thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Johnston. Over to you, uh, Pudit. Thank you, Marisa. Uh, just a very good question. Um, I believe that uh, sharing and learning uh, is the important tool. Uh, I think if we, to leverage uh, my network, uh, we should have some mode of uh, learning and sharing from the other networks. And also we will use our tool, I mean the HURS, the uh, Healthy University Rating Scale as a tool for common learning in our network. And uh, what we would like to do is to uh, create mode of uh, capacity building together in our among the members and also we would like to uh, have some exchange with the other network. Thank you. Thank you, Pudit. Christian, over to you. Yes, uh, so, um, well, I, I also would like to stress, like uh, Rajiv also pointed out, that the network needs to be very open, um, that you do not only accept, uh, like, um, university as, as institutional members, uh, but that you did not, do not put any barriers upon uh, membership in the network so that also uh, important stakeholders uh, can be involved or uh, just interested uh, individuals or researchers from universities who can spark then the interest also within uh, their institutions. Um, and um, I, I would like uh, in the future also to create more bonds between our German network and the uh, international networks. Uh, we tend to be a little bit in, I, and I would not say isolation, but uh, to bond more with uh, the German uh, speaking countries uh, than uh, with other networks. Um, and I will, on our ne next uh, bigger meeting uh, next month, I will uh, bring this issue up, uh, how we could also uh, work closer. Uh, with the other networks. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Um, I know in the Canadian context, um, we are hoping to and have had conversations about how we can, um, you know, take advantage of some of the energy that comes from these types of events that really um, sparks interest, um, imagination, and in what health promoting campuses could look like, how we can strengthen um, relationship with our Indigenous relations um, strategies. And so uh, we've been looking at how uh, engaging that broader network to really reflect on what we've learned today 
um, bringing everyone together to think of what does this mean within our Canadian context and how, how can we um, continue to build the momentum and excitement and hopefully encourage other campuses and work with other campus communities to endorse the Okanagan Charter. Um, so a big thank you again to all of you for um, your thoughtful contributions.